because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up, Harry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. This is Coogan Cassis for IFL TV, a proudly sponsored by Everlast. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Eddie. How do you think it was going to slip this one? What? Because as we get older, no one really cares, do they? And I saw Matram put out a little uh, happy birthday, Pat McCormick. And do you know what's unbelievable? You know Pat McCormack? It's his birthday today, same as me. It's also Luke McCormack's birthday. Oh, that's weird, that's isn't unbelievable. it? unbelievable. They're both brothers that got the same birthday. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it's so, weird, that one. Yeah. That, yeah. So I don't really like talking about it, to be honest with you. But I've had a few texts. Three. It shows you how popular I am. But yes, I am 44 today. Listen, 44 years look at where you are. Hey, look I at you. Feel, I feel better now than I did in my 20s. I swear. Well, if people didn't know in the room it was your birthday, or is your birthday, yeah, you. they definitely do now. But it's nice, isn't it, when people send you little messages? I guess, very nice. Right, Sonny Edwards fight week. Um, did you see the footage from yeah. yesterday? I mean, it was all going off. Love it, love it. I mean, look, let's just make one thing clear, because I think this is important, because Sonny feels the same way. I couldn't give a monkey's whether you like Sonny Edwards or not. I don't think he's trying to be liked, do you? I just think he's being Sonny Edwards. Quite an amusing young man, very intelligent actually. Comes across as a bit of a knob sometimes. Listen, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on the same boat, right? But I tell you what, I love it. I think he can beat anyone in the division and I think he's, he's, he's edgy. So I'm looking forward to it. You know, we've got a great turnout here today. That sort of stuff yesterday. When people say, um, oh, I had quite a few messages saying, yeah, you, uh, I see you put Sonny Edwards up to, uh, mate, you know Sonny Edwards. Do you think I would ever go up to Sonny Edwards and say, don't say this, do that, do that. He's going to do whatever he does. And that's part of his edge, you know. It's a good fight. Campos is, is coming with plenty of heart, trying to become the first world champion from Chile. And he's been calling out Sonny Edwards, DMing him for two years, giving it the big one. And... As Sonny said yesterday, do you know that they, these Chile, Chilean fans keep sending me the crown emoji and the clown emoji, and it's the same colour as the Chilean flag? I'm like, all right, mate, okay. So, yeah. Is Bam Rodriguez going to be in attendance? He won't, he won't be here on Saturday, but we are negotiating with Bam Rodriguez for that unification fight. So, he wasn't able to make the weekend, but we're in negotiations with Robert Garcia to make that fight November time this year. Okay. Look, triple world title night on header. the... What? World Championship triple header. World Championship triple header. Uh, Neely Hughes, yes, was obviously scheduled to fight. Shannon Courtney, we've already spoken about this. Katie Healy, 6-0, comes in. Big opportunity for Katie Healy. Uh, but Neely Hughes, obviously, I'm assuming, is kind of chasing the Ebony Bridges fight yeah. after if she comes through on Saturday night? Yeah, I mean, look, Nina Hughes is a great story. I, I gave her the opportunity in Dubai against Jamie Mitchell. You know, I like Lee and I, I know of Nina Hughes. I, I thought it'd be nice to give her a chance. Expected her to lose comfortably. She won the fight and showed everybody how good she is. She's arguably the number one in the division after that victory. Um, Katie Healy, 6-0, and never boxed at that level, but very experienced. And it's a good fight, you know, and it's a, a lot of pressure. I wanted to give another domestic fighter an opportunity for a world title. So you've got that. And then, of course, you've got Shanika Johnson against Ellie Scottney. Fantastic female fight. You know, Shanika Johnson, very, very tough. Comes over here with a lot of confidence. But Ellie Scottney's a class act. Many people feel like it's just a matter of time before she becomes world champion. We believe it's going to be Saturday night. And then the future for her is massive. But a really, really good fight. Three really good world championship fights on the card. Interesting little about on the card as well, uh, Kamari and uh, yeah. Bellotti. Yeah, that's the before the belt. Um, you know, we start off with Muhammad Ali, great young prospect, um, George Lidard and Shannon Ryan, and then we go into Kamari against Bellotti, which is a fantastic fight. Now, Reese Bellotti, we just saw him, one of my one of my favourite fighters because I think he's just all action, real nice kid, great support from Watford as well, 
and Yusuf Kamari, Dillian White's charge. You lost to Castaneda, but he's a very good talent. Both those guys have to win that fight to move on and, and stay on these cards. And uh, it's a really good fight before we go into the main event, the main card, which will kick off with Nina Hughes against Katie Healy. And then we'll go Chev Clark against Davy Jameson, which is a brilliant fight. Final eliminator for the British Cruiserweight Championship. Um, on to Ellie Scottney against Shanika Johnson. The Romford Ball in a, a nice step up in his last eight rounder. And the whole army filling up Wembley Arena. And then on to the main event. Really good card. Tickets, how have they gone? Good. I mean, we'll have close to 4,000 in there. Um, I think Sonny Edwards has been starved of... Uh, any kind of publicity or profile so we're just getting started with him but it's a good card without the superstars on the card it's a great night of boxing and three Brits in world championship action Eddie what do you think about when people on like Twitter like put the seating plan out and they start going oh this row's empty or that seat isn't filled or this part isn't whatever what do you think about that I mean I think it's easy to say those people need to get a life you know and and actually live a little but I disagree with that really I think if people are interested in that and, and that's the weird thing about boxing is that fight fans are interested in things like that which is unique to any other sport isn't it you imagine like I don't know a test match cricket like a cricket fan going on and start scouring through all the test match fixtures around the country going oh I've just looked at Edgbaston and the back row's empty there what's all that about oh, fucking hell let's do it it's just mad, isn't it? So, but that's boxing. And we have to understand that boxing fans are very emotional, but they're very passionate. So it's very strange. But also, it is what it is. I don't, I don't mind it. I mean, it's very, very hard to, to fill arenas these days without a big fight. So, you know, we're talking about... You know, when we say we'll have 4,000 in there and say, oh, they've only got 4,000. I'm actually over the moon with that. It's a crowd, yeah, I know. But listen, Johnny Fish has done 1,300 or 1,400, whatever he does. You know what I mean? So, like, um, yeah, I, I, I think that we're not going to start taking advice from people on Twitter who are studying seat maps. But we also understand right now you have to provide more value than ever. Okay. Um, let me find the right quote here. <coughs> um, stay in your lane, you've been warned. But Oscar De La Hoya. Who said that? Oscar De La Hoya. What did you do? I've no idea. To be fair, someone from the zone said to me, oh, Oscar's not very happy with you about your comments about Ryan Garcia. So like, listen, these people make me laugh. You want to slate me non-stop. I mean, firstly, when Oscar De La Hoya saw me in Abu Dhabi, couldn't have been nicer. I mean, almost to the point where, it, you, you know, it was almost to the point of, well, hello, Oscar, how are you getting on down there? And it was like, um, oh, we've got to do more to get my toes great. Oh, well, it's great to be out here. You know, he was sniffing around everybody in Abu Dhabi trying to get his own deals while he was out there. And then, you know, three days later, he's slating me on social media or an interview. Then he starts slating me that I know nothing about boxing. I should never put Bivol in with Canelo, this, that, this, that. So I got asked about his comments about Ryan Garcia. And I said... It was bizarre and ridiculous and like, I couldn't believe you'd publicly slate your top fighter on social media. So what? And now he's saying, stay in my lane. Fuck off. Favour. When have I ever stayed in my lane? Swerving all over the gaff. What do you think that warning is? Oh, how scary. I don't know. I'm asking. What? I have no idea. I don't know. But I guess he thinks I'm talking to Ryan Garcia or his lawyers. I have no conversation with Ryan Garcia. I've had no conversation with his lawyer or anyone associated with Ryan Garcia. I was asked a question, and I said it to you. Do you? Th I think it was our interview. It was our interview. Yeah, yeah. Do you think? It's like, you know, Ryan Garcia is his biggest fighter by a mile, and it's time to respect your clients on a level because without Ryan Garcia, the roster is already thin, but it's super thin over there, right? So it's a bit like, as we said in our interview, Anthony Joshua loses his biggest fight of his career, and me not turning up to the presser and just going, oh, I'm going to go and get a bite to eat. Good luck, son. Like, it's just, it wouldn't happen. So he's obviously, you know, what this comes down to is he can't take the heat because you want to slate me for years and then I just say, give my opinion on the Ryan Garcia situation and apparently I've got to watch myself. So, right, it is what it is. Okay, who else has had a pop at Eddie Earn <laughs> this week? Okay, uh, obviously Frank Warren with some... Uh, Rather choice words and comments towards yourself and 
Anthony Joshua yesterday on IFL. Yes, Eddie. That, that was just bizarre. Bizarre. I mean, firstly, I have to be honest, you tagged me in it, or IFL tagged me in it. And it'd I, been Umar, but yeah. Um, yeah, and I just clicked on it, and all I saw was, I thought you the contract. I was like, what the fuck's going on here? I mean, he said that he will f sign the contract, forge the contract. I'm like, he totally, look, we've got a real nice thing going with George Warren, right? These, and I, don't, I really don't mean this disrespectfully because my old man's one of them, right? These older boys, they've got to go and have a sit down and just, just relax and have a cup of tea because you've got to let, you've got to let the calm ones, the, you know, the ones where there's no... Because what Frank Warren does is just completely ruins any chance of the fight getting made. Me and George will speak and George will go, let's not say anything, eh? And I'll go, I agree with you. And to that respect, we've said nothing, really. We've talked about where we're up to, no disrespect. Frank comes out with that, and it's like, it's like Aram, uh, Warren, even my old man. Listen, I'm saying the same thing. Banned from interviews, because they don't, they've just lost the plot. And they just, they need, like, they just say crazy things that just, like, so, you know, Barry Hearn, I put him in the same, Frank Warren, Bob Aram, just go, like, just go and have a, go on holiday. Do you know what I mean? It's time now, it's, it's not worth the stress for you. I mean, it looked so desperate, so desperate, because it, they are desperate. They're totally desperate. They have no offer from Saudi Arabia, and they have no fight. So, but what, what I've learned is... You have an offer from Saudi Arabia. We, we, we have an offer without a contract. So we need to wait on that contract. But we're also, don't forget, Frank's never done a fight with Saudi Arabia. I've done two fights, right? So at the moment, we've got, by the way, we don't... I'm well up for talking about the Tyson Fury fight in September, but we have our plan for August and December. But interviews like that, do you think they're going to help? I mean, it's like, Anthony, Joshua, you're a coward, you're a stop pussy. And like, what, what, you've absolutely lost your mind. What are you doing? Is that the sign of someone honestly trying to make a fight? And the thing is, the public have wised up to Frank Warren and Tyson Fury. And you've just got to read the comments. Like, they're not falling for it anymore. And we ain't falling for it anymore either. We'll make the fight and we'll talk about it sensibly. But what we won't get into is this, fucking sign a contract, you pussies. Fuck, what's that? I'll forge the contract. What are you talking about? Like, I, Fanny merchants. Sorry? Fanny merchants. Fanny merchants. This is the level you're dealing at. We're getting called Fanny merchants, right? I quite like that so much. But That's the reality funny. is, is George would have watched that interview and gone, just like I watch interviews with my old man and go, just like Todd the Birth watches interviews with Bob Arum and goes, do you know what I mean? It's just time. It's just time. You know. What, what do you think about his comments regarding uh, Anthony Joshua's potential next opponent in, in Dillian White and his reference to going around the cemetery and just trying to find someone? Just fought Derek Chisora. I love Del Boy. Tyson Fury just boxed Derek Chisora. And he wants to complain about Anthony Joshua against Dillian White. It's a great fight. We might not make that fight. But AJ's fighting on August the 12th. So, and we don't, we're not going to be messed around, but honestly, I, I, I just clicked on it and I was like, I was baffled by it. Baffled. Mental. And I see, you know, I do see, like when my old man goes on one, it's the same, listen, it's the same school, but it's like, it's 1970s school, wherever they come from. It's like, you know, me and George could make this fight if everyone was sensible, but not, like, that goes to me, it goes to AJ. Next thing you're asking me about it, everyone here is asking me about it. I say something, he watches this and goes, Argh! and then before you know it, there's just absolutely no chance. So, The, the 40 60 he made reference to, that's, yeah, well, accurate, listen, yeah. You're that desperate, offer us 50 50. I mean, you're, like I say, I've never seen such desperation, so maybe I'm going to ask a 50 50 now. They're that desperate. But your, your talks, have they been centered around a 40% split to Anthony Joshua? Listen, Cut all this bullshit. We sent them an offer. We no no no. You sent us an email saying we would like to make we would we would like to make you an offer of the fight in September. We had no contract, nothing. But they wanted to talk about the fight. I don't think they're lying, by the way, because they've got nowhere to go. But there's been no like, you know, it was just it was weird. It was really weird. Okay, look. Um, in regards to Dillian White, I saw some comments that an offer has been sent to. Yeah to White's team, where are we with that? 
Nothing, just discussing it. We had an email conversation today. We got a call probably later today. Um, like I said, AJ's fighting August 12th. We'd like it to be against Dillian White. We'll see if we can reach a deal. Why wouldn't that fight take place? What would be money? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And what is your plan money. B to that? Um, anyone else in the top 15 to prepare him for Deontay Wilder. But listen, Dillian White's a very, very tough fight. But that's the fight AJ's called for. What about AJ's post the other day regarding Dillian White? Yeah, I don't know. I saw it. I mean, it was before... And there's the, some other things on there was, we don't have to yeah, talk yeah. about, but yeah. It was before the offer was sent, but he, he knows now the offer's been sent. And that's the fight he's called for. Okay. Where are we in your attempt to make Conor Ben and Chris Eubank? Um, we're in discussions. Um, obviously, we'd like to make that fight in the UK, but... We're also in discussions with Abu Dhabi to stage that fight. We need to get it done in the next week. Otherwise, we'll look at other options. So, you mentioned UK there. Where are we with the board situation in that Just resolution? Connor's lawyers dealing with UK, not the board, just UK. Okay. Are you sending a text or are you looking at your notes? I don't really have notes, but I just want to make sure I don't really forget anything as you're here with me. Um, okay, so. In regards to this weekend, yeah, you can do a little closing speech on this weekend. Yeah, OK, I will, actually. I think um, British boxing's in a position where you can have three world championship fights and still not be a mega show. But we're about to embark on a six-week journey around the world for matchroom boxing and design. And this Saturday, I think you're going to see one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in Britain in Sonny Edwards defend his belt. Two undefeated fighters in a fantastic fight. Two other world championship fights on the card. Ellie Scottney against Shanika Johnson, brilliant fight. Nina Hughes against Katie Healy, great fight. And also two really good domestic scraps on the card. Yusuf Kamari against Reese Bellotti before the bell. And also Chev Clark against Jameson for a final eliminator for the British Cruiserweight title. Great, great fight. And the final eight rounder at a Romford Ball and his army from Wembley Arena. Throw in a couple of prospects with George Lidard, Muhammad Ali and Shannon Ryan and you have got a fantastic night of boxing. We're going to try and get the main event a little bit earlier. Right? I think... Sort of time. Listen, I think, I think 10 o'clock is the latest the main event should be. First bell. But we're going to try and move a little bit quicker on the broadcast. We've got a lot of fights to cram in. But it's a really good night of boxing. I hope you all enjoy it. And after this, we're going to New Orleans, we're going to Madison Square Garden, we're going to Sheffield for Dalton Smith against Sam Maxwell, we're seeing Diego Pacheco headline in Mexico, we're going to Detroit for Alicia Baumgartner, Montana Love against Hitchens, and of course the professional debut of Andy Cruz, and then we're coming back to the UK. And we're getting ready for a card, looks like July 29th, we're looking at a card in the UK August the 12th with Anthony Joshua, and also we're looking at a card August 19th as well. Three UK fights within four weeks. That's good news. Quick couple of updates. Katie Taylor, looking likely she could rematch Serrano. Yeah, we have to exercise the rematch clause within a period of time, which we are, well, I don't know, 10 days to go with that. We're discussing the next move. She wants to fight Chantel Cameron. She's desperate to, to rematch Chantel Cameron. So we'll see what happens. The Lee Wood situation? Um, talking to Komatov's team, we would like to do Lee Wood against Josh Warrington. There's things to resolve. Haley Progre? Um, I believe Haney will be in New Orleans next week to watch Regis Progre. After that fight, we will look to potentially make an offer to Devin Haney and also potentially make an offer to Jack Cattrall for that fight as well. And lastly, Canelo Bivol, where are we with that? Still negotiating, not there yet, uh, got some way to go. Eddie, thank you very much. And, uh... No, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you for being a pioneer for British boxing. Thank you for servicing the hardcore fight fans for years and years. Thank you for helping me to raise the profile of myself, matchroom boxing and all our fantastic fighters. And I don't think it's said enough that IFL, time after time, consistently stay at the top of the tree in terms of YouTube outlets. So well done you. Big up your chest and say well done. I am God within the YouTube industry. <clears throat> Fuck hell. because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I, I never shot up at it. It must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 